Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is um, about the code block body. Of course that has to do with the Lambda expressions here. So I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com. I'm going to select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the Lambda block body tutorial. In my introduction to Lambda expressions tutorial, I demonstrated a simple form of a Lambda expression that evaluated a single expression. The structure for a Lambda expression that evaluates a single expression looks like this, right? You've got your parameter list. Then you've got your lambda operator, also known as like an arrow token or an arrow operator. And then you've got your expression, right? In this particular case, x times y. So the return result of the above lambda expression is the value of x times y. So we got a single expression in this whole lambda expression here. So it's very easy for, the, uh, for it to go ahead and say, we're just gonna return this particular value here. Now, what if we need to execute multiple statements inside of our Lambda expression and return a value based on some sort of logic, right? We can do this by simply putting in a code block body to the right of the Lambda operator. So here's what it'll look like. We still have our parameter list, then we still have our Lambda operator, arrow token or arrow operator, and then we've got our block body instead of a single expression. So the block body is just like any other normal code block for like a method, constructor, or something like that, right? And we can put statements inside of this here, right? So and this just did a little simple example. See if x is greater than y, return x, else return y. So it's just that, just that simple there. So the block body form of a lambda expression must include a return statement that is a compatible return type matching the abstract method declared in the functional interface. Okay, now hopefully this last sentence makes sense, but if not, you'll probably want to watch my uh, introduction to Lambda expressions again there to get a little refresher or learn what a functional interface is. Okay, so let's go down here and highlight this source code and get started on this stuff here. Okay. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt set up on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right-clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD, next, and finish. It's just that easy. Okay, let's go ahead and open that up. First thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. Press enter, and you should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You're going to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called Java using the MD command. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'm going to go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here and I'm just going to call this uh, Lambda block and notepad Lambda block dot Java. Okay, let's go ahead and control V to paste or right click and select paste. All right, now we've got our source code here. So I've got a functional interface down here, and of course I just named it functional interface, so it's self-documenting there. Um, with our single abstract method here, right? And because this is an interface, this is implicitly abstract because it doesn't have the keyword static or default in front of it there, which were two new things inter <coughs> introduced. Sorry, I'm battling a cold here still introduced in, uh, in Java 8. So, we've got our abstract method here with a boolean return type. The name of the method is name filter, and it takes two parameters, name and filter. I'm going to just go ahead and run this here real quick without going over anything, which is not, not my normal way of doing things, but I just kind of want to show you how, what this thing does here before we go into that. I think it's going to be easier in this particular case. So, clear the screen, type in Java C, Lambda block, Compile it in Java. And the block, let's go ahead and run it, execute it. And so it'll say, please input characters, character, character argument for filtering, not case sensitive. So the first thing that comes up, it just checks to make sure, see the uh, 
the args array here, see if the length is equal to zero, and just displays that in return. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is just uh, basically initialize this name or string name array here to these values right here, names, <laughs> okay? And let's come back here real quick. So I'm just going to now put in an argument here of just S, right? And I notice I'm not case sensitive there. And so it'll display to the console names that begin with S, Sam, Steve, Shelly, Sheila, names that contain S, Sam, Steve, Shelly, Sheila. Okay, hit the up arrow and I'm gonna change this to A now, right? Oh, let's clear our screen so it's a little cleaner there. And names that begin with A, Adam, name that names that contain A, Sam, Larry, Mary, Dan, Adam, Sheila. Okay. Now you can see basically what this does is it does a couple sort of filters here. So let's go over now <clears throat> the actual source code, and specifically the Lambda expression. So here I'm creating a Lambda expression to filter names based on starting characters. Okay, so um, declaring a reference variable fi, a functional interface type, and I'm setting that equal to this Lambda expression here. Right, so we've got our parameter list, sometimes called an argument list. Yeah. Two, one, one or the other, tomato, tomato, doesn't really matter. Then we got our lambda operator, also known as our arrow, arrow operator. And then here's our code block right here. And so what I'm doing is I'm just checking to see, so n will be passed in as, as the name when we loop through the array, like for example, Sam, and f is our filter, right? Which will basically be, um, <clears throat> the first element of the args array here, all right? So what, what I'm doing is, um, first thing I'm changing both n and f to uppercase to make this so it's not case sensitive. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the substring of the name, starting at the zero index, and just checking the length. So when I put in like, for example, a, that will check, you know, zero comma one on the substring there and just check to see if that first letter of the name that we're looking for, so like for example S, that'll say okay, okay, that that'll match that. So that'll equal, you know, the filter to uppercase. And if we did something like for example, and, and this this just basically means we can put in more than one character here, right? Is what that'll allow us to do. So for example, if I put in like, well, let me clear my screen here. SH, right? Names that begin with SH is Shelly and Sheila. Names that contain SH are Shelly and Sheila, right? Okay, so this is all of our logic here for our code block on the Lambda expression. Lambda expression for this whole entire thing. Code block right here. So if the filter matches the, you know, whatever length of the filter, like if it's only one character, right? and then that name in the array matches that character, it'll go ahead and return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. So that's, that's what this Lambda expression is actually going to be evaluating there. So um, now let's come down here and, and I'm just displaying this to the console names that begin with and then plus the first element of the <coughs> argument uh, args array there at the zero index. And then I'm using just in a simple enhanced for loop to loop through the name array, right? And string is just the temporary um, variable that'll be assigned whatever element it's currently at during whatever iteration. So the first one, for example, being Sam, we'll just check to see if if I, fi dot name filter, right? Name filter is the name of the abstract method there, right? And we're passing it the the name that uh, that it's currently iterating through in the array, and then arg zero, the first element of the string argument that we're passing in here, right? So if this is the same, which this will return back true if it is, we'll just go ahead and display that to the uh, console there, right? So fairly simple there. Now, so that loops through basically the first part of this. Let's go to screen. I'm just gonna do like, uh, a again, right? Names that begin with A, Adam. So we come up here to our array here. Yeah, sure enough, Adam is the only one in here that begins with an A. So up until this point right here, right? That's everything it's doing up there on this particular, uh, for this abs, for this uh, Lambda expression there. 
get some water here before I start coughing. Okay, so on the fly, we want to modify our filter to check for uh, basically any characters in the entire name. So we still got a reference variable fi, and now I'm just we're still going to pass in like the same uh, arguments here or our parameters, whatever list you want to call that there. And then you've got the uh, lambda operator. And then here's our new code block. So this this particular time, um, I'm changing up what I'm checking for to return true here by just uh, forcing the name that's coming in to uppercase. And then just calling, invoking the contains method, which is part of the strings class as well too. And then uh, I'm checking that to the uppercase of the uh, argument that we're in taking in here, right? And so basically that will uh, return back either true or false. So up here in this particular lambda expression, checking for just the first character or characters, right? Um, down here, I'm checking for any characters, okay? All right, so, and then I'll just simply display names that contain, and then plus whatever, you know, we put past as an argument there. And then just simple for loop here, invoke, it's basically the identical for loop as this, only the only thing that's changed is basically we use the lambda expression to modify that method on the fly for name filter, right? So name filter will return back true if this particular, um, whatever we passed in the command line argument there is anywhere in the string, okay? So, uh, let's see, I didn't change anything on that, so we can keep playing around with this up here. Right, so let's clear our screen. And let's, for example, like, uh, so S, right? We did S. Those are the only ones that contain S. And begin with S. We did SH, right? Um, let's do A. Adam. Oh, look, we got like Larry and Mary. Let's do an AR, right? So no names that begin with AR, but names that contain AR, Larry, right? Um, see names that contain, what about an H, right? Oh, just Shelly and Sheila and contain, nothing that starts with it there. And um, let's do an L. Again with L is Larry. Larry, Shelly, and Sheila have that in, in there. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Close out of that. I'll leave you guys with this quick final thought. So. Hopefully all this makes sense. You know, if not, please review my introduction to Lambda Expressions tutorial. Then come back uh, to this one again. Check it out. Review it. Until you kind of got a grasp on that there. But that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.